Ahoy there, me hearties. This be Captain Silver Hook, and you're listening to the Two Old Pirates Podcast. Set sail for an open sea of stories, tales, and some really crazy stuff. I expect you to like and subscribe, lest you be walking the plank. Ha <laughs> ha Hey, welcome to Podcast 46 of the Two Old Pirates. Uh, today we'll be covering something kind of quick, not real, real long, but I thought it'd be interesting for each of you guys to go ahead and hear this. Uh, we're going to go and be covering um, 10 unique deaths by very, very famous people. So these are people that uh, are in the collective consciousness of everybody. Uh, if you haven't heard of them, uh, these are famous people, but their deaths came in very odd ways. So not the usual, you know, just common you know, cancer or uh, murdered or something like that, uh, old age. These are just 10 unique ways that these people all found uh, their way off this earth. Starting at number one, Tennessee Williams. Tennessee Williams was considered one of the top three um, American playwrights of the 20th century. Uh, he had so many hits in the 40s and 50s that it's unbelievable. He, uh, the Glass Menagerie, uh, Streetcar Named Desire, uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Uh, Knight of the Iguana. And he won multiple awards. He also had a long history of drinking. And because of that, um, he was found dead in his hotel suite at the age of 71 in 1983. What had happened was he had gotten very, very intoxicated and he had some um, eye drops for redness. And he took the cap off and put it in his mouth. And when he went back to go and put the drops in his eyes, it slipped back into his throat and he literally choked to death on the cap of like Visine to get the red out. Um, 71 and he was so intoxicated that he accidentally swallowed the cap to a Visine um, bottle and he choked to death on it. One of the great playwrights ever, uh, in, especially in modern history, um, dead by Visine cap. Number two is Isadora Duncan. You might not have heard of her. She's a little bit older. Uh, she's a world famous dancer. She danced all over Europe for 30, 35 years. Uh, became very, very famous. <coughs> she uh, was in France one night in 1927 in an open air car, uh, not uh, convertible, but there was no top on it. On it. And uh, as she was saying goodbye to some friends, she was going to go with her boyfriend off somewhere that night. Uh, they told her to, to stay warm because it was a chilly night. And she had a very, very long scarf that had been made for her by one of the friends that she was saying goodbye to. And she said, you know, goodbye, my loves. I will see you later. And she wrapped it around her neck and then, you know, threw the rest over her shoulder. And as the car proceeded to start to take off, that loose end was so long it fell out of the car and trailed on the ground until it got picked up by the left right re wheel and wrapped around the axle and yanked her out of the car and snapped her neck instantly and she was dead before she hit the pavement. Um, this all happened in front of all the people that were there. She had barely got maybe 25 yards away and she was yanked violently back and, and killed instantly. Um, when I come up to the third one, it's gonna be a, a triple play here. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, Bon Scott, and John Bonham. Uh, everybody knows Jimi Hendrix, considered one of the top five guitarists of all time. Uh, bon Scott was the lead singer of ACDC. Uh, until his death um, and they just broken in the United States so they're they're gaining a lot of traction here so they're one of the bigger rock bands and then John Bonham is the drummer of one of the, uh, the greatest bands of all time Led Zeppelin a lot of people consider them right up there with the Beatles or the Rolling Stones so what happened with all three of these gentlemen are they were all highly 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 intoxicated with alcohol I mean these guys have been drinking for years and the more you drink the more you need and due to this, uh, they regurgitated um, bile and vomit, but they were so intoxicated they didn't even know that they had thrown up and it just sat in their throat and they literally asphyxiated and choked to death on their own vomit. So imagine being so drunk that you don't even know that you vomit and you, you choke to death on that. Um, would be, as I turn the page, Sylvia Plath. 
If you've never heard of Sylvia Plath, she was a very, very famous poet and novelist. Uh, she was known for The Colossus and other poems. That was her like big, big uh, breakthrough. Uh, she wrote many, many books, many, many uh, uh, compilations of po poems. She was well loved, uh, but she was also clinically depressed and she had tried to commit suicide several times. Um, her doctor uh, talked to her about these things and she had two children to live for. You know, she had a marriage, she had, but, but she was just so depressed with life that um, she had the kids in the other room take a nap and then she taped off and put towels underneath the floors and taped off the windows leading out of the kitchen and then she went in and turned the gas on and shoved her head in the oven and just stayed there breathing in the gases until she died. So that's how she was found with her head in the oven. Uh, so Sylvia Plath, she was only 30 and she committed suicide with her children in the next room over but she didn't want them to be hurt so that's why she made sure that no gas could leak out of the room. Uh, the next one, Virginia Woolf. Virginia Woolf was an English writer and she was kind of along the same line, lines as Sylvia Plath, very, very famous, very much beloved, uh, great artist, great writer. Um, and she um, really cashed in in the 20s and 30s with some of her books. But she, um, what they now consider from some of her writing, she was bipolar, she's a manic depressive, um, a lot of mental issues. Uh, she tried to commit suicide several times before and uh, one day in 1941 she decided that, that was enough so she went down to the river near her house and she had a big long warm coat on because it was cold out and she took huge rocks and stuffed them all the way in the pockets all any pocket that she could find and then she waded out into the river so that it would drag her under the weight of the rocks and she drowned and she left everything behind uh, she was uh, I want to say 50 maybe so once again another writer uh, depression and they took their own lives sadly but it's a unique way to commit suicide weighting yourself down with a coat and just walking out into a river um, Sylvia Plath uh, sticking your head in an oven uh, the next one is Sherwood Anderson Sherwood Anderson was an American author uh, he had tried a couple businesses before he became an author and none of them seemed to work out. He had a severe nervous breakdown and then he started writing and he really enjoyed it. It made him feel a lot better and he became very, very famous. Um, he was successful in the early 20th century. Then he decided to go on a, uh, a, a tour, a trip basically. And he had a lot of followers in South, Af uh, South America, excuse me. Um, and so he took a steamboat down there with his wife in 1941 and during the trip he kept on complaining that he had a stomach ache he kept on saying my stomach hurts you know I don't know understand why you know no matter what he ate no matter what the doctor on the ship gave him it just hurt so um, finally he was found the next day dead uh, after another night of complaining about his stomach and they stopped in uh, Panama I believe it was Panama on the way back, uh, they took him off the ship, they had an autopsy done, and it found out that a toothpick, somehow a toothpick, a whole toothpick, was found lodged in his stomach that he had swallowed it somehow. And by swallowing that, it had perforated different, the small intestines and the large intestines, and caused an infection to begin, and it just slowly built, got into his blood, and before you knew it, uh, he had passed away. He was in his 60s, but, um, it had done severe damage over those three to four days that he complained. But nobody, since he passed away, nobody ever got to ask him, did you accidentally swallow that? Is that what caused this? So we'll never know how it got inside his stomach. A full toothpick, it wasn't chopped up or chewed up or anything, all the way down the hatch. The last couple that I'm going to go ahead and uh, touch on, uh, William Holden. Uh, you might not know the name, but you've probably seen him in at least a couple movies if you ever watched any older movies. William Holden was a huge actor uh, nominated for multiple awards and in fact in 19 um, uh, he won he, he won the Oscar in 1953 for um, a movie he won an Emmy in 1973 for a television uh, TV show that he was on so you know he he was an award-winning actor uh, he starred in Sunset Boulevard Sabrina picnic bridge on the River Kwai the Wild Bunch uh, network uh, and the towering Inferno to just to name some I mean he, there was these are his big ones the ones that he was nominated for made tons of money and stuff 
what happened was he had a drinking problem and he was staying at a hotel and it was 1981 and at some point in time that night after heavy heavy drinking he slipped and the table that was next to the bed in the bedroom was made out of marble and he hit it straight like right right there and he was bleeding but he was so intoxicated he didn't really feel the pain so there was a box of Kleenex tissues next to the bed and <coughs> the autopsy showed he survived for about 30 minutes after hitting his head and there was all these little Kleenexes that he had tried to s stop the blood by you know just packing it and then he had taken and see all the blood and put it down and well, I guess I'm still bleeding he'd take another one and try to go like this but he was literally bleeding out and he didn't realize because he was so intoxicated so due to the intoxication um, he was found the next day and he had bled out next to his bed never knowing that he was dying because he was so intoxicated that uh, there was just all those Kleenexes that were just soaked in blood and then he was laying there in a pool of blood but he didn't even know he was dying because he was so drunk and the last one I just found out about this one the other day I've never heard of this woman before but her death is pretty unusual her name was Charmaine Maxwell and in the early 90s her and two other girls signed with Michael Jackson's record label and they released released an album under their name Brownstone and it was a platinum record their first album out of the gates boom platinum they had a top 10 hit off of it and everything looked you know just bright and then they just faded away Brownstone never had another hit never had another album hit and it was as over as as fast as it came she went on with her life and then tragically in her home she stumbled and when she fell she fell onto the ground and as she fell she had a wine glass and the wine glass hit before she hit and uh, evidently it made a jagged thing so when she came down it went straight into her neck on the side and clipped her carotid artery so it's just bang crash jagged edge fall slip and she died from severe injury to her carotid artery from a glass that she had dropped on the ground and fell on. Um, that's just bad luck. That's just bad luck. So for Charmaine Maxwell and some of these others, it's just Isidore Duncan. Um, you know, just it, it's bad luck. Jimmy and them, man, they were party animals, and it led to their death. William Holden, alcoholic, led to his death. He fell and hit his head. Um, but some of these are just tragic accidents of very, very famous people that you know, how, how did we know that anything like that would ever happen? So, it's a short um, uh, podcast. I just wanted to get one out there to you guys. You guys are so wonderful. You know, we hit our 500th subscriber. Uh, we hit over 100 on the last podcast. Uh, and uh, I hope that we hit another 100. I hope that you enjoyed this. And I hope that uh, some of these deaths kind of maybe make you understand even in the best of times, accidents can happen. So for the Tool Pirates, this is Eric, and I hope that you enjoyed episode 46. Peace, and I'll see you for episode 47.